On Dafayin Dalit Omen Aleph, we began studying the sugya of Nitan Latzilo Be'echid Me'varov. And that's a case where instead of killing the Rodev, you can save the Nirdaf, the victim, by, we called it shooting for the legs, if you remember. You could um, be Pogea Be'echid Me'varov. And that's the sheet of Rabbi Yonasan ben Shol, Desanya. So if you're looking three, do- three lines down from the top of the page, Rabbi Yonasan ben Shol, Omer Rodef, Shoyer Rodef, Achar Chavero, Lahargo, Vyochal, Atzilo, Bechad, Mevar, Velo, Hitzil, Neragolov. So if there's no din of a Rodef, because you can save the Nirdaf without killing the Rodef, then if you kill the Rodef, then you're a Rotzea. My time with the Rabbi Yonason ben Shol, Tichsiv v'chi notzu anoshim yachtov v'nogfu isha harav yotza yoladeo anosh yanesh kasher yashis alav baal ha'isha. So that there were two people involved in a brawl and one of them hit a pregnant woman and as a result she miscarried. He has to pay her husband to make vlados. Fiyom Rabbi Lozar, b'matzus shememisa kosum edaber. The brawl between these two people was a life or death duel. Duel till you die. Meaning, the one who hit his wanted to hit his friend, but instead he hit this woman, wanted to kill his friend. And how do I know this? Because the very next post says, that if this woman dies as a result of this maka, then he, the maka, will be killed as a rotzeah. So we see that this person had an interest and a, an intention of killing his friend. If he didn't have an intention to kill his friend, then he's a shogeg. We wouldn't be putting him to death. And even though the one who dealt the blow, the one who was the maka, his kavana was to kill a person, and therefore he becomes a rodev. Nevertheless, the Torah says that if she didn't die, and only the Vlados died, then Ono she has to pay money to her husband. Iamrit Bishlema, this is the Josh of Rabbi Yonason. It would make sense if Yochel Atzilo Biachme Varov Lonitan Latzilo Benafsho. In this case, the Rodev is not considered Chai of Misa. Why? Because we could have avoided killing him and saved the Isha. Nitan Latzil Benafsha is Hainu the Mishkachas Lo Yeonich. Now I understand why he's paying to make Vlados. A Rodef doesn't pay any money because of the principle of Kim Lev the Rabbin, he's Chai of Misa. So what would be, asks Rabbi Yonason, a situation where there's no status of Rodev, and that's why he has to pay the Dmei Vlados, and he's not Chayev Misa, because the Nirdaf could have been saved by taking away one of the limbs of the body of the Rodev, and therefore you're not allowed to kill him. So if there's no Chayev Misa, there's no Petur of Kim the Rabbi, and therefore... He pays for the Dmei Vlados. So, if you're going to tell me that Yochel Atzilu Bechem Beivarv Nami Nitan Latzilu Benafsho, that even though you didn't have to kill him in order to save the victim, but you went ahead and you killed him, and therefore you're still considered killing a Rodef, and therefore you're totally exempt from any punishment for that, Hechi Mishkachas Le'Diei Onish, then you're telling me that he still has the status of a Rodef. Why would he be chayv to me vlados? That's the kasha. That's the drosha of Rabbi Yonas Okay, so let's get back to the Rambam. We discussed the Rambam that says 
that if it's a case of Yochel Atzilo, the Echad Meivarov, and you killed him, then the Ramam says, Neragolov. I'm sorry. The Gemara says, Neragolov. The Ramam, on the other hand, in Perak Alf Milchus Rotzech Halach Yud Gimel, Kolayochel, we saw this already, I just want to review it. Kolayochel, Ahatzil, Beaver, Mevar, Velo Tarach, Bekach, Elahitzil, Benafsha, Sharode, Fahargo, Hareze, Shofech, Domin, Vechayv, Misa, Avel, Ain, Bezdem, and Misa, no so. We cannot put him to death. And we tried to figure out, according to the Ramah, why can't we put him to death if he's not a Rodev? And therefore, by killing him, you're a shofet domim and you're chayv misa. So why can't Bezdin put him to death? He's chayv misa. We should implement the death penalty. Now, there is a possibility of saying that since it was Yochel Atzilo B'yechem Meivarov, he's not called a Rodev. And that would mean we're Mafkia the Shem Rodev. But that's a difficult position because if that be the case, why... Why aren't we putting you to death? I mean, he's not a Rodef anymore. So you killed someone who's not a Rodef. Perhaps we could say that even in the case of Yochel Atzil Meivarov, he still is a Rodef because his intention was to kill his victim. But since you could have saved the victim without killing the Rodef, then you're not allowed to kill the Rodev. But again, even that's difficult because the Ramam says that I raise the Shofik Dom Vachayev Miso. And if you're telling me he's a Rodev, all right, you shouldn't have killed him necessarily because you could have, but nevertheless, why are you Chayev Miso? I raise the Shofik Dom. So again, if we emphasize the safe of the Ramam, namely that ain't Bezdem and Misano, so it sounds like the Ramam is holding that he is a Rodev. And therefore, if you're killing the Rodev, we can't put you to death as a murder because you killed a Rodev. So frankly speaking, I, I would be more inclined to say that the Ramam holds he's not a Rodev. And therefore, by killing him, you're a Shofek Domin. The only reason why Ain Mimisano so is because this was part of an effort to try to save the Nirdaf. Again, he went way too far, but he's not a full-fledged Rodseach. And therefore, we don't put him to death. But in any event, it is possible to say that according to the Ramam, he's no longer a Rodef. But then again, you're stuck if he's no longer... Yeah, just one second. I'm sorry. It's possible to say that he is a Rodef, but then you're stuck with the question why the Ramam says that he's a Shofech Tomim if he's killing a Rodef. Now, instead of Yochel Atzilo Be'echad Me'varov, what would be if Yochel Atzilo, if you could somehow calm down the Rodef, like, let's say the Rodef is in a state of anger, and you could speak to him and assuage him, or perhaps you could castigate him and say, well, you low scoundrel, you're running after a person, you're going to kill an innocent person. So if, again, I don't know how we would know this, but if let's say 
we would be able to evaluate the situation as such, that if you would speak to him, you might convince him to stop being Rodev, but instead you decided, no, I'm going to kill him. You took the law into your own hands. You didn't speak to him. You didn't try to calm him down. You killed him. And once again, that would be like even without shooting for his, for his legs or so, you, you could have stopped him by speaking to him. You know, I'd be inclined to say that if you could have calmed him down by speaking to him, then for sure he's not a rodif. So that the Ramam says that if you could shoot for the legs and you killed him, then ain't Bezdim and Misan also. So we were inclined to say that perhaps he's still a rodif. And therefore, ain't bezdin, uh, ain't bezdin mimisen also. But in a case where he could have spoken to him and calmed him down, then for sure he's not a rodif. And then we could say, once we have the shame rodif completely, then someone who kills him is chayv misa, and bezdin mimisen also. Now. When we say it's a situation where Yochel Atzilo Bechad Meivarov, that would depend upon whether you had the weapons and the wherewithal to do so. Now, we said that in the case of a Rodev, anyone could kill the Rodev. So you may have a whole bunch of people there who are spectators and watching what's going on over here, and each one has an obligation to try to save the Nirdaf. One person has a gun in his hand in which he could shoot for the legs and save the nirda through Yochel Atzilo Vara. But let's say another person doesn't have those weapons. He doesn't have a gun in his hands. And therefore the only way he could possibly save the nirda is by killing the Rodif. Let's say in such a in such a scenario, would he would he be allowed to kill him or do we say that, well, since somebody else could save the Nidav without killing the Rodev, therefore the Rodev doesn't have a shame Rodev objectively, even as far as other people are concerned, who don't have the luxury of Yochel uh, Atzil Now, if we're going to say that since it's Yochel Atzil he doesn't have a shame Rodev anymore, and that's why the Ramam says that he's a Shofech Domim, he's a Rotzeach, and he's Chayav Misa. So that it could be that as far as somebody else is concerned, he would also be Chayav Misa if he kills him because he doesn't have a Shem Rodev. But we wanted to suggest that maybe even in Yochel Atzil Vechmevarov, he still has a shame Rodif because his intention is to kill the victim. We're not allowed to kill him because it's Yochel Atzil Vechmevarov. Maybe that's only vis a vis one person, we'll call Ruvain, who has the ability of, of Lahatzil Vechmevarov, but not vis a vis Shimon. Shimon, therefore, would be allowed to kill the Rodif. Now, the Raivet disagrees with the Rambam and holds that in the case of a Rodef, if you kill him, then Yochayev Misas Bezdin.
And once again, the question is, what about a second person who cannot be Matzil Bechad Meivarov? So the Raivet clearly is Mafkir the Shem Rodev in the case of Yochel Atzil Meivarov. And we wanted to suggest that therefore even another person who cannot, doesn't have that I, I, option of Yochel Atzil, even he cannot kill the Rodev because he's not a Rodev. And the Ravid who says that if you kill this person, because, even though it's Yochel Atzilo, then you get killed by Bezdin. It means that certainly we are Mafkir the Shem Rodev. So even the Shani, even the other spectator, is not allowed to kill him since the first guy could save the Nidav without killing the Rodev. And Pokemine Shem Rodev. Okay, now we're going to talk about the Kalim. Rodev Shaya Rodev Achar Harodev Latsilo Vishiber Kalim. So Ruvain is on his way to save Levi by killing Shimon. Shimon is the Rodev, and Ruvain is trying to kill the Rodev. And he breaks Caleb. So Rava says, Bain shall Rodev, Bain shall Nidov, Bain shall Koladom, Potu. And Lomen So the person who's trying to kill the Rodev should be liable for compensation if he breaks somebody's caliph. But Rava says he's part of Lomen Adin. Lomen Adin means it's a separate takonas chacham. Now, what's the halacha if the Rodev himself damages somebody's property? So, a little bit earlier in the Gemara, the Gemara quotes Rava Rodev Shal Yerodev Achar Chavera Veshiber Sakelim Bein Shal Nirdov Bein Shal Kol Adam Potu. Where the Rodev breaks the Kalim of the Nirdov or anybody else's Kalim Potu, my time of nation is Chayab Benafshe. So, we have the principle here. Of Kim Le Bidrabmi. Then Rava says, Nirdaf Shashibar Sakelim. So the Nirdaf is the fugitive who is running away from the road. And now, is he liable for compensation if he breaks Kalim? Shall Rodev Potter shall call Adam Chaya? So let's start backwards. If the Nirdaf breaks someone else's Kalim, not the Rodev's Kalim, then he's Chayev because he saved himself by breaking someone else's Kalim, but that doesn't mean that he's part of Tashlumen. But if, on the other hand, he breaks the kalim of the Rodev, then he's Potter. 
if the Nirdaf is allowed to kill the Rodev to save himself, then certainly he's allowed to break his Kalim in order to save himself. But again, we're not giving him a carte blanche heter to break the guy's Kalim. It means if somehow by breaking the Kalim, he's able to escape from the clutches of the Rodev. That's what he quotes here in footnote number Zion. He says, So this exemption for paying compensation when the Nirdaf destroys the cable of the Rodev is only if it's necessary for him to break these Caleb in order to achieve his goal as a fugitive of running away from the road and save his skin. But if he, you know, there's no carte blanche head there for him to break everybody's Caleb. Okay, now we'll try to read the Rambam. So you want to open up the Rambam to Perk Ches, Mehilchas Chovel of Mazik, that's in the book called the Zikin, Halacha Dal, Perk Ches, that's chapter 8, paragraph 4, Nasa Momon Chaver Biyado. So literally, it means he was carrying somebody else's mammon, and he gave it over to the Anos. The Anos is, you know, working on behalf of the king, like a tax collector, and uh, he collected this guy's mammon, but somebody gave it over to him. That's called a Moser. So here's the Rabbim's language. Nasa Momon Chaver Biyado, he took over somebody else's Momon, but Nasa La'anos, he probably wanted to save himself from paying the tax. So he grabbed onto someone else's Momon and gave him to this uh, representative of the king. Chayev L'Shalem Mikol Makom. He's got to pay compensation. Af al pi Shamelech Onsalahavi, even though it was the law of the kingship that imposed the part of the obligation to pass on the stuff. When is he chayev? So the Ramam differentiates between two different scenarios. In one scenario, the Anos demands that, it, that the Jew bring, bring forward the Mama. But in the second scenario, the Anos... Is Omar al Hamomon. 
ונעשה ברשוסו. So the Anos is saying, where would I find the X? You know, I want to take away a tractor. So, you, so the Jew is forced to show him where you get the tractor. And the Anos now is going to just confiscate the tractor. He may now force the Jew to transport the tractor to another place. And the Jew complied. He's potter. And that's called Omad Ha'anas Al Hamamon, the Nasa Bershusa. And the Ramam says that came in Sha'omad Ha'anas, the Tzada Otsar, Kfar Ovad Komashiyeshbo Vukiyu Nisraf. So again, the Jew only showed him where to find the tractor of his fellow Jew. The Anas now is standing on top of the tractor, so to speak, figuratively, but he's about to confiscate it. Therefore, it's like Nasib or Shuso. Well, just had a uh, a blowout over here. So what do we do? Let's see. Give me a minute to see if I could turn on the electricity.